not as the, like that hospital wards are closed. It is by the grace of God that you and I are alive today to give glory to his name, he who created us. Amen. Please take your seats as we share what he has put in my heart. It is my belief, it's my prayer, it's my desire that you'll not go back home the way you came. And it's not about me. It's not because um, it's me who is here, but by his spirit. We have just sung that he shall not take the Holy Spirit from us because we cannot do without the Holy Spirit of God. Church, before we start, I would like us at this juncture to join all the worshipers and all the intercessors of Kenya to give thanks to God for giving us a peaceful election. We are enjoying peace that passes all understanding because it's not like us. What we know best is to fight after elections and to hate one another. But who is our God? Today, I don't want to know your tribe. Today, I don't want to know where you came from or where you come from. You are my sister and you are my brother. Please let us stand and sing. I don't care what tribe you belong to. For as long as Calvary is done, you are my sister and you are my brother. And it is our, my prayer, even as we greet one another, as we handshake one another, as we stand because we are standing now, church, that even the verdict that will be given tomorrow by the Supreme Court is not going to catch our God of God. He knows. Because our God is more supreme than the Supreme Court of Kenya, he already knows where we are going. And one thing I know is that he has our nation at heart. So please stand and handshake that person who, who comes maybe from the lakeside, who comes from the coast, who comes from the highlands, who comes from the Great Rift, and handshake them. Talk to them. You don't care what tribe they belong to. For as long as Calvary is done, they are your brother, they are your sister. Amen. Sincerely from the depth of our heart. Kutoka kilindini chamoe wetu. share just a brief moment I've enjoyed. The other day I was thinking, ha, look, at, look at us. Look at the peace we are enjoying. When I talk uh, of uh, Margaret Nyabuto, first of all, she's my sister. First of all, she's my colleague in church. She's my co-worker. Only later to think, come to think of it. Nyabuto does not come from the highlands like me. I thank God and I don't take it for granted. When I think of uh, Abil, Abil is my brother, Abil is my son, Abil is my co-worker in the vineyard of my master. And when I think of Abil, when I'm talking to Abil, when I'm even thinking about him, I don't remember he comes from the lake. 
from the lakeside. I just hear, see him as a brother. And I was just thinking about it and I blessed the Lord because some time back it was not like that. You would have seen that person as a lakesider first before you embraced him or refused to because of tribal lines. But today I thank God and I bless the Lord that even after the verdict that will be given tomorrow, Kenya continues to be Kenya and we continue to serve the Lord, our master in his vineyard in whatever capacity. Amen. So we bless the Lord that even after the verdict of the Supreme Court, our God remains supreme and he is above all the supremes of the world in Jesus' name. Amen. As we go to share the word, I would like us to remember that every person who stands here, they don't come here about themselves. So be ready to learn something from somebody. Do not allow a someone like this to just go. Sometimes, you know, we demean people. Sometimes you just look at a person. Maybe they are not your choice of preacher. And so you dismiss them. But let me tell you, I don't know where this came from, but I have to share it with you. Be ready to get something from whoever stands here. Even those people who lead us in worship, even those people who do the pastoral prayers, let us learn from them. And I was thinking, the little that I know, I have learned from people. Before this, I could not even pray. I could not even offer a prayer, a prayer. I could not do a prayer anywhere. But I listened to people. I did not demean them. I did not look at them. I did not look down on them. Just listen. Look beyond whoever stands here. And see the, the one who sent this message, the, the, the messenger. I happen to be one who is bringing the messenger. But remember, the message has the owner. Look beyond me. Look beyond Nixon. Look beyond Haggai. Don't look at the age. Don't look at the tribe. Don't look at the, the gender. But remember, he has been sent of the Lord. I just have to tell you that. I just have to share because in the past, I would look at Wazungus, and I have given this testimony before. And I thought Wazungus were not people who are serious because they have no problems. They don't share anecdotes with us. They don't have the same pasts with us. But let me tell you, the same person I would look down on and think he should not even be preaching, I would get so much from them that today I'm able to stand when I remember the words they used, when I remember the message that they brought into my life. So be ready and listen to the word of God, irrespective of whoever brings it. Amen. Today I have my topic as kingdom demeanor. Kingdom demeanor. Demeanor is behavior. Kingdom behavior. And the opposite of demeanor, Haggai, is misdemeanor. But we are talking about demeanor or behavior, kingdom behavior. Uh, we were born in sin, like David says in Psalms 51. We were born in sin. But a time came that we were revealed to the Lord, or he gave us revelation, and we knew him. And we accepted to come into the kingdom. Now we are co-workers. We work together. All of us are working in the kingdom of God. We signed in. So when we signed in, there is a certain demeanor or a certain behavior that is expected of us. We are not like everybody else. We don't behave like everybody else. Show me somebody who is in the kingdom. Show me somebody who loves their God. Show me somebody who fears God. And I'll tell you, this person has good demeanor. This person has good behavior. They behave in a certain way. Not everybody behaves like them. And they don't behave like everybody. Buana asifiwe. I hope up to there I have made some point. Or you know where I'm, I'm heading to. So before I go to where I was reading, where, where, what I want us to share, let us go to Galatians 5.20. We are going to start with the bad side, with the negative side, and then we go to the side that I want us to share. For us to understand the virtues that we are going to read and share, we have to know what we are not supposed to do. So Galatians, uh, today we don't have Josh, we don't have anybody in the booth. So we go to Galatians chapter, 
uh, 5 and verse, verse 20. Yes. This is where we are going to start. I'm sorry, this is where we are going to start. These are all negatives. So that we go to what is expected of us. This is what we are not expected to do. For example, it says idolatry. We are not supposed to be in idolatry. We are not supposed to be doing sorcery. We are not supposed to be having hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies. These are bad things. These are bad things that are not supposed to be found in the life, in the heart, in the mouth of a child of the kingdom. Idolatry. Idolatry is ador adoring anybody else apart from God. You, uh, you, we have our idols. We have idols that we, we, you know, we, we lay adore and we take care of them. We think about them. We bow before them. Idolatry. It could be money. It could be somebody you have made your idol. Some people have made others their idol. And without so and so, without so and so ruling this country, without so and so in my life, I cannot make it. So idolatry is a next. Sorcery is a next. Sorcery. We don't go to consult sorcerers. Hatred. Ah, you should not be found saying, I hate so and so. I hate that person. I hate. I hate. You know when you talk like that, you are going away from the demeanor of the kingdom. That is not a word that should be used in our vocabulary. It should not come from our mouth. I hate or hatred. Hatred. I don't like Durango. I don't like Abil. I don't like. Why? So this is a word that should be avoided. Contentions. Jealousies. Outbursts of wrath. Outbursts of wrath, you know. Eh? Matusi. And you can say anything. anyhow. And if you are caught like that, you don't display the demeanor of a child of the kingdom and heresies, believing in things that are not godly, believing in things that you just had, believing in things that are out of this world, things I don't even know who taught you, heresies. You are supposed to adore God and his word, his doctrine and his statutes. So these are the things in Galatians 5.20 that should not be found. If you read 21, uh, it continues to say, all the, these people who practice, who practice these things shall not see or shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But I wanted us to go to Philippians now. In Galatians 5.20, we've been taught of the things that we should not be found doing. We should not find ourselves in. But if you go to Philippians now, chapter 4, uh, from verse Philippians Chapter 4, uh, from verse 1. Quickly from verse 1, because I'm, I'm, I've highlighted verse 8. Verse 8 is going to be our main topic. Therefore, my beloved, this one will just go uh, uh, like a walk in the park. Quickly, 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 until we go to verse 8. Therefore, my beloved, and longed for brethren, longed for, or oh, beloved, loved people are longed for. You are my brethren. Now he's saying, this is Paul to the Philippians. Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, beloved. Yes, continue. No, no, no. We will not continue. We will go to chapter, to, to verse 4. Verse 4 says, rejoice in the Lord. This is Paul say, telling the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Again, we are going quickly. Let your gentleness be known to all men. Remember all these words. Remember all these instructions that Paul is telling to the Philippians. Let your gentleness be known to all men. That is verse 5. Verse 6. Be anxious about nothing or be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And he continues, and the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 
Now remember all the things he has told these people from Philippines, that to rejoice in the Lord always, uh, and again I say rejoice, let your gentleness be known by all, be anxious about nothing, do not worry, and, uh, but, by everything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, and, and make your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding uh, shall, uh, uh, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. After telling them all those, he tells them, finally, so now verse 8. Verse 8 is our topic for today. Oh, this is where I've gotten my message. But verse 8 says, finally. Finally means you have been, we have been talking about other things. Yes, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Do not be anxious about anything but in prayer and supplication. But finally, listen to this. Finally, when somebody says finally, it is very important. It is the last of the things he has been saying. Finally, brethren, whatever things that are true, Whatever things that are true, you better note that because we are going to talk about it later. Na, naeza kukuliza what, what was one of the virtues that we are told by, by Paul. Whatever things that are uh, true, we start by true. Whatever things that are noble, noble. Whatever things that are just, whatever things that are pure, whatever things that are lovely, I love that. Whatever things that are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And that is why I say, and I called, uh, I, I have named my topic, kingdom demeanor or kingdom behavior. Finally, whatever things that are true. So in this kingdom, as we serve in the vineyards of our master. Whatever things that are true, let truth be found in our, in, in our everyday behavior. Remember, God is truth itself. Our God is truth. And Jesus says elsewhere in the, in, the, in the Gospel of John, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody goes to the Father, or nobody comes to the Father but through me or but by me. I am the way, the truth. So truth is there. So Jesus already, being God, is the truth. Let truth be found in our behavior. Let truth be found in the children of the kingdom. And the truth, even when it hurts, is very important. And we shall only be found where truth is. And as much as we can, I was, when I was thinking about this and praying, I, I, I just saw the truth and told God, Sometimes we are not perfect. Sometimes we want to be truthful, but sometimes we don't make it. But let me tell you, let us be found in truth, because truth will not cause you shame. You know when you tell a lie, many times, of course we have told lies, but you know when you have told a lie, you are so conscious, because you are going to sell yourself. You are going to give yourself away. When you tell a lie, you have to be so conscious in your next sentence, in your next words, all the time. Ah, na nilikuwa nimemwambia nini dio dio nisileta mambo mingi. Nilikuwa nimesema nini. So you have to think because you told a lie. But if you told at the truth, you will not be ashamed and you don't even have to think twice. Eh? What is your name? Instead of saying Lucy, I say Mary for whatever reason. You know when we tell lies, sometimes we have a reason, sometimes we don't have. What's your name, Mary? So then, then the next time we meet, I meet with that person, I have to remember my name is Mary and not Lucy. So truth is lacking there. Truth is not, uh, is not found in there, in that. So when you are speaking, when you are not in truth, you are not yourself. Actually, you are fake. When I don't tell the truth, and everything is a lie about me. Have you seen people who, yani, there's no truth in them. And not, not even the name, not even where they came from. I don't know what they are ever ashamed of. It's like I even want to be said, told that I come from the lakeside when I don't come from there. My father's name, I give a, a different name. My husband's name, I give a different name. Everything, where do you live? I live in Kaptembwa. 
Everybody knows I live in Kiamuji, but everything I say is a lie. Why don't you stick to, stick to the truth and teach yourself, your children the truth? Even in church, even in the vineyard of our master, let us apply truth because truth will prevail. So Paul is saying, whatever things that are true, and then he ends with, meditate upon those things. Talk about those things. Live for those things. So it is the truth that, uh, only the truth that will keep us with no shame. You know, if you tell lies about things, what do you do? You know, you want to sound big. I, I drive. Everybody knows I walk. But I want to tell people I drive, not just drive, but a big car. Then when I'm seen walking all the time, I'm ashamed because I told a lie. Please let us stick to the truth. And that is why Paul is telling the Philippians, whatever things that are true, true, and God himself is true. So whatever things that are true, meditate upon those things. And your conscience is clear. You know when you tell the truth, you better know me. Maybe my, my background has some issues. Some of us have issues with our backgrounds. And because we don't want people to know us, we want people to think, I have always been like this, or I was even better than this. I tell a lie. <laughs> I remember one time I told my children, I don't know if it was a bad lie, you tell me. One time I told my children, you people finish food, you go to sleep. And then one of them asked me, bam, did your mother used to pressure you like this to eat? Uh, then I told them, uh, yes, my mother, my mother, whenever she made sausages and chicken, uh, she would really press us to eat. And you know it's a lie. We never used to eat sausages and we never used to eat chicken as such. And then the, the, sometimes they would ask me, Mom, did your mother used to take you to school? Did she used to drive you to school? Then I would tell them, yes, my mother could drive me to school. <laughs> Obviously, I'm telling them a lie. Then I even asked myself, what, what am I teaching my children? It's like I don't want them to know my background. Though mine was just a, mine was just a joke. It was just a light moment. But some of us have to create things so that you look like you have always been so good that you are brought up on cloud nine. You are not on cloud nine. You are in a grass-touched house like mine. But we don't want to be associated with, with grass-touched homes. So we want to speak as if it was always so good. So we tell a lie. Some of us were brought up by relatives, and we don't want to say that. I remember somebody I went to school with when we were in Form 2 is when I realized she came from a very rich family, uh, and she used to be dropped in school by a Mercedes. And I knew she was very rich, and she talked big. She would only talk with the Asians. Our school had Asians. I was in a day school in Nairobi. And uh, Asians were secluded. They were, always, they were always more important than us. But some of us who are rich would associate themselves with the, 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 the Asians and the rich people. The Asian children would even drive themselves to school. So this girl would always associate herself with the rich Asians. Only to realize, many years later in Nakuru we met, only to realize actually she used to stay with her relatives. Her mother was just uh, humble. I'm stopping short of saying needy. So, but she wanted to live a fake life. She wanted to sound like that. That was her uncle's place. So it is not true. We are not living the truth. We are not living a true life. Please just be true. If I tell you I was in a grass thatched house, if I tell you I, I, I used to walk bare feet, and it is the truth. What me the liver via to Nikiwa standard two. Nikiwa mtumukubwa. But I want to sound like I don't even know why. Some, uh, some lies, I do not understand where they come from and what they are about. Just speak the truth. And if you don't want to speak the truth, you better just keep quiet. So he says, whatever things that are true in the kingdom, and remember, God is truth, uh, truth itself. I am the way, the truth, and the, I'm the way, and the truth and the life. So when is the truth, we have to stick. When we are the children of the kingdom, we have to remember that truth is very important. It's a great virtue. And then he says, whatever things that are noble, 
Noble is a fine personal qualities. Noble, something noble. Something noble is something of good quality. You know because we are children of the kingdom, we have to live a noble life. We have to train our minds to think of noble things. We are not just anybody. We are, not, we are not supposed to be found anywhere with anybody doing anything. We are noble. We are people with high qualities. And we should behave like that. I was remembering all the saved people I have seen. I have always admired saved people, by the way. Even when I was in the village. Our village did not know salvation very much because we came from another background so to speak, a Catholic background, but there were still one, two, three somewhere. I used to love the way they were talking. You know, they were so open, and they were not ashamed of their God. Where we went to church and where we belonged, we did not always talk about God. It's like we were ashamed. But people who know their God, they are not ashamed of him. They are not ashamed of the gospel. And I remember they would go, you know, heartily, you know, laughing, talking about God all the time, saying, Buona asifue. More than you are sure, Buona asifue. We would never say such a thing. This is a noble person who knows who she, he or she is connected to. When you know you are God, you have your own qualities. So now you behave like somebody who knows they are God and who does not believe in anything. You know your God is there for you. You know your God will speak for you. And you know your God is the Lord. So when you, are, when, uh, uh, when you are a child of God, you are expected to do things that are noble. And Paul is saying once again, whatever things that are noble, meditate on those things. Think about them. Think of the things that are useful. Think of the things that are valuable. Talk about them. Do not be ashamed of the gospel. When it is prayer time and you are in a crowd, a crowd that uh, a lot of people do not, do, do not even know God, do not be ashamed. Ukiambiwa, sasa wewe, diyo utaomba. Usiambiwa, utaomba, wanza kusema, ambia mama shiko aombe. Ambia tu mama shiko. No. Whatever things that are noble, meditate on them. Take it as, a, as an honor, a favor that you've been told to, to, you know, to pray in front of people. Do not take it as a punishment. Do not take it as a, a, a demeaning thing. It's a, it's a good thing. So behave noble, nobly. Behave like a noble person. Behave like you know you are God and like you know wh why you live, why you do things the way you do them. And uh, still on noble, it's a very superior de uh, demeanor, a child of the kingdom with good mannerism. You know with, with being noble, you are mannerisms. Your behavior should depict the behavior of a child of God, the behavior of the kingdom. In the kingdom, we are not ashamed. In the kingdom, there are things we don't do. In the kingdom, I will not be found in bars at night, eh, throwing out busts. I will not be found quarreling with neighbors. I will not be found picking quarrels with everybody in church. You want everybody in church to be your, 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 you know, to be your enemy to be your problem. You become a problem, but you see everybody as your problem. If you are noble, if you are th th thinking of the noble things, please keep it decent. Your mannerisms should be decent. Do not make people quarrel. Do not be the source of problems, even in church, in your neighborhood, at your place of work. Let people know that is a saved person. That person, eh, so and so, uh -uh. I know Abil, and Abil is noble. Abil, his behavior, whatever he does, notwithstanding, Abil is a man who fears God. Show a noble behavior. And things that are, be, are noble, meditate on them. Think about them. Be different. Look different in your plot. Wherever you stay, let people know door number three or door number 12 belongs to a Christian. And you see one day, they will knock at your door. They want you to pray for somebody or something because you have displayed or you have depicted the picture of somebody who is noble, somebody who knows their God. And you know when you are related well with God, when you are well with God, when you are right with God, it will be known. You don't even have to tell them. That you see me, I'm so righteous. Me, I'm good. You don't have to. But the way you behave, 
the way you talk to somebody at the Mpereji, the way you talk to somebody at the gate, the way you talk to somebody in the compound and out there, it just depicts somebody who is noble, somebody who knows their God, somebody who is in another kingdom. Amen. And I hope we are getting somewhere. And then, whatever things that are just, whatever things that are just, morally right, unfair, treating others appropriately and deservedly. Treat people the way they deserve to be treated. Treat people appropriately. Behave to your neighbors appropriately. At your place of work, be just. When you are the boss, be just to people. Be fair. Be fair to people. Do not pick quarrels. Do not be, be the reason or the cause of somebody saying that my Monday is blue or Monday blues because of you. No, be just. Be fair to those people. How would you like to be treated as a boss, even as a worker, a common worker? How would you like to be trusted, uh, to be treated? Treat people that way. Be just to them. Be fair. And justify now your demeanor. Justify your, your faith. Justify your kingdom as a child of the kingdom. Justify what you claim to be. You claim to be a child of God. Justify that by being just to other people. Don't, be, don't, don't step on people's toes as you pass. Don't call people names. Don't call people what they don't want to be called. Don't ashamed people. Don't humiliate people. Don't embarrass people. Whether they are younger than you, remember they have hearts. They have a heart. Whether, and when they are older than you, obviously you should even respect them. But all in all, be just. Whatever things that are just, whatever things that are just, meditate on them. Buana asifiwe. Are we getting something or I'm just talking to myself? Are you there? Can I see by a show of hands that I'm not talking to myself? You know, I can be here and talk a lot about uh, to myself and then go down and think that I've preached. Today I'm teaching. And then treat others appropriately. Well-founded just, and justifiable. Uh, when, when you have to criticize, we are still talking of being just. You ha of course we criticize. Of course I will say no. Of course, even when we go to meetings here, uh, those people we share the tables when we go to meetings, we don't have to agree on anything, or everything. I personally don't agree on everything for the sake of agreeing. And I will not agree on anything because of fear. But I also have to be reasonable. I have to be just. If you have to criticize, if you have to say no, why have you said no? Not for you to be seen as very intelligent or just to be a dissenting voice. If you say no, let it be justifiable. Let there be a good reason. Be of value to that meeting, that panel, so that you are not going to say whatever you say for the sake of saying it, but you are going to say what you are saying even for improvement. For example, if it's a church, so that the church can even go to another level, help by being just. Criticize justifiably. Criticize, but criticize with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. We do not say that we say yes to everything. You might say, do something that I don't. By the way, uh, sometimes you may even dress in a manner that needs to be corrected. Please allow me. My age even allows me to say some things. When I tell you, Dada, kuja kidogo, uh, this and that, I did, mm, okay, we can do, we can deal with the length of that dress. We can do, deal with, the, with the, even with the width, with the upana, upana magi, inaita upana, ikae, isikae taiti sana, na isikae ati ile, na onaga ingine, ni tight, inaita body, body hugging, in the tight, inaita mpaka chini, well, lakini, slit inafika hapo. So, allow me, because I have noticed that, to tell you, oh, Dada, that dress is very beautiful. You see, I have to be just, but I also have to be wise. I cannot just bombard you and tell you, look at you. What are you wearing? Oh, this is a dress for the... No, 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 I will tell you. My sister, that dress is very beautiful, but I think it is for another place. 
if you if, maybe if you can wear it in a in a ladies meeting or oh, maybe in the neighborhood it would be good you see i'm criticizing but if i criticize let it be justifiable let it have some wisdom bwana asifiwe whatever things that are just meditate upon them amen we are still in philippians and the letter is from apostle paul whatever things that are pure we all know that pure and holiness are cousins or sisters pure and holiness the bible says elsewhere i think in the book of leviticus if here and there in many places our god is holy and he wants us to be holy as much as we can even without perfection because we are not perfect at all and none of us is but let us pursue things that are pure things pure pure means it has no impurities it doesn't have mingi mingi it is pure like when water is pure it is good for drinking but when it has another taste ushakunya maji iko na taste ya kitungu mimi amjui ushakunya maji iko na taste ya makojo somebody is asking me nilikunya wapi ah you can imagine some things you can just imagine you don't even have to ushakunya maji iko na mchanga at least yo kimekunywa That, that is impure water so let us pursue things that are pure let us pursue things that will bring glory let us pursue things that are glorious let us pursue things that are holy actually even when we admire let us admire people who are glorious you know there are people you would like to listen to there are people you would like to copy there are people you would like to emulate and imitate and you, you hear me telling people who are even younger than me when i grow up i want to be like you that means i have liked what they are doing so there are people you will admire because of the reason the, the reason depending on that uh, on that content but there are people you wouldn't like to be associated with leave those ones alone the ones who would like to be like still let us have wisdom they are they are only people who fear god they are people who have the wisdom and knows know how to, dis, to to dispense the wisdom admire them but admire them with caution there are people i have loved like i have always said i don't know if i have said it here there are some old men ben hinga i salute you they are all white but you see the the fear of god in them do you see the beauty of god in some old men i don't know why i'm talking about women because they are also there but there are some men and when they stand they talk things about god there's a man who sings somewhere there's a clip that goes round it was in my phone for a long time and that old man is all white but he's somewhere being uh, photoed singing things about Jesus I just love that such people so these are the pure the people I want to be associated with pursue purity pursue holiness I can almost say they are holy I don't know how I don't know I don't know how to measure holiness but I can tell somebody who is after the heart of God be that person people would like to emulate emulate be like ben higa be like the old men even old women who are all white they are even old they are walking with a limp they are walking with another cast style i have discovered that some age i even changed my my walking style si kupenda nilijikuta tu natembea saa ingine hivi because i don't know sometimes i have a neck there i have a i don't know such a person who knows god and who fears god is to be emulated it's to be imitated pursue people even if you have to adore adore people not even adore adore should not be adoration is unto god only but even desire to be like people who know their god who pursue purity who pursue holiness holiness because our god is holy so pursue things that is about purity let's try to be pure without many things and when they come because sometimes they come and you find yourself not the one that you know you find yourself you know 
with so many things, like I was sharing with somebody the other day. I have some seasons when I make a lot of enemies. I just find I hear so and so has become my enemy. So and so was supposed to come and do run an errand in my house. They did come, and I was waiting for them. So they have become my enemy. And this and that. Somebody, even where I buy things, somebody where I work, whatever I do, I find myself, myself doing a lot of things. When I go before the Lord, I pray, my God, whatever I'm doing to cause all this, forgive me and remove me from this. So when you find yourself doing things that are not pure, don't continue. Step back, retreat. Go before the Lord, that the Lord may give you now the order and that you may be forgiven. Because sometimes we find our lives not so holy, not so pure, because when you are mixed with a lot of enmity, it means you also, you cannot be pure, you cannot be holy, you cannot be perfect. So there must be something you are also doing, because you are finding yourself in something that is not pure. So whatever things that are pure, meditate on them and pursue them, follow them. And then he says, Whatever things that are lovely, I loved this. Lovely. Lovely means lovely, beautiful. When a child of the kingdom speaks, they are supposed to be speaking things that encourage. They are supposed to be speaking things of the kingdom. They are supposed to be talking and show, giving a picture of somebody who is happy wherever they are. And that is why we sang that song. Restore in me the joy of your salvation. Joy brings loveliness. Joy is lovely. When you have the joy of your salvation, you don't, know, you don't just go grimacing at people. Mm -hmm. Look at this picture. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not a good one. But can you imagine me now? Mm -hmm. Whenever you meet somebody. Mm -hmm. Now she thinks she's great. Mm -hmm. ah, look at him. Just because he's driving a good car. Mm -hmm. Look at them. Just because she has a good hairstyle. Mm -hmm. Is that lovely? Do I look lovely? When you always have to, you know, something negative. Whatever things that are lovely should not include things that are negative. Don't be negative. Don't be one who pulls the others down all the time. Eh? At my best, you want to pull me down. You know a lot of us, even when we are not beautiful and we know it, we want to be told that we are beautiful. Tell us we are beautiful. How much will it cost you? Just that. It's lovely. When I'm told I'm beautiful, I believe it, even though when I know I'm not. If you tell me I'm smart, it's beautiful, it's a lovely thing. If I tell you you are handsome, you know you are not, and I also don't even believe you are, but you see, I'm encouraging you. Just encourage somebody. Say lovely things. And most of us women, especially women, we want to be told that we look young, and we know we are not young. <laughs> oh, Mama Kagura, you look young. Now I even believe I'm young. So for that moment, I'm happy. Just make me, it's lovely. I know I'm not young, and even if I look young, I know I'm not young anyway. But just be kind. Be kind to a sister, Maggie. Just tell me I look beautiful when I'm not. Just tell me I'm smart. I know I'm not, but at least it's something nice. It's not good to pull me down all the time. At sasa wewe, na hiki yatu yako, utangu ununu yata hujaweka chini. Ah, don't tell people such things. Eh? Don't tell people the way I was told in town one time. Ay, Mama Kagure, I didn't know it was you. If it was not for this dress, I would not have known you. You know, to a woman, <laughs> do you know, okay, <laughs> what I mean, do not be one who pulls the others down. Encourage them. Hata kama hiyo nguwe yake diyo imefanya umjue, usi muambie openly, muambie tu, I just knew you from, from the back, so you see I know you. Just be careful with what you talk. Talk lovely things. Eh? Be lovely. You know when you are happy, and when you have humor, when you make people laugh, and they are happy, even the kingdom is easy to work in. The kingdom is easy to live in. The kingdom becomes interesting. I'm not saying that we dwell on nonsense all the time, 
but at least be lovely, lovely things. Think about them. Tell somebody something. Ah, you look super. And you know, even when I did not believe it, when I tell you and I see your reaction, I also believe now you look super. No, so maybe actually you did. So whatever things that are lovely, meditate upon them. Encourage people. Don't pull them down. Don't discourage people. Don't disappoint people. And some people will disappoint you for no reason, just to, mess, to make you messy, to mess you up. Whatever things that are lovely, meditate upon them. Encourage somebody. When we sing here, sometimes we can sing. Me and mom sometimes can sing. And I know our voices are not even very good. Singers will know that. But encourage us. Don't tell us that we are singing like frogs. Tell us, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even when we know it's not true, at least encourage us. Because either way, there's nothing you can do about it. We have already sung anyway. So just tell us, you sang well. Tell us, ah, and you did, ah, that collabo was good, even when it wasn't. What do I mean? It makes your heart glad. It makes somebody's heart at ease. Maybe my heart was down. Maybe I have been pulled down by so many things, things of life. You know, we, have, we, have, we are besieged from all sides. We are surrounded from all sides. Make our life easy by encouraging us. Whatever things that are lovely, eh? even, when, even when you have to correct me, even when you have to correct my dressing, it's good, but say it with wisdom. Say it in a lovely manner. Don't pull me down. Don't undress me. Eh? Don't make me feel like I, you know, I don't belong. Don't make me feel like I am in the third class or third world. Amen. Whatever. Hey, Nilkuta Hilenda. Okay. Whatever things that are of good reports, Buana Asifiwe. Good reports. Purpose to display faith. Have faith. Good reports. Remember, there were some messages that, or, or there were some people who were sent to spy the land of Canaan. There were 12. And the greater number came to say, why, guy, go, you can't make it there. We were like grasshoppers there. There are people who are like giants. Oh, and the land, okay, it has milk and honey, but it is not habitable. Nobody can live there. It's a bad land. It's full of thorns. It's full of kayafa. Oh, no, no, no. And thuraku, everywhere there are thurakus. Thurakus are what? Black ants. They are all over. They are, that is bad report. And there were two who purposed to bring good report. They, 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 they decided not to see the bad things, but they just saw the milk and the honey and the very habitable land. Be of good report. Encourage somebody. Somebody is even telling you of their woes. They are going through problems. And so now you don't sit down with them and tell them, Guy, quisha wewe. Finish. You know another person had such problems and they ran mad. You know another person, Guy, these days, another person had problems like that. They developed pressure and they died. Hey, another person, you know, they had the same problem as yours and they got a heart attack. No, that's not good report. Tell them, that is it. But there's nothing new with that. This is something people have gone through and they came out of it. Buana asifiwe. Whatever period you are going through, it is temporal. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing will last forever. Only God and his word. That is a passing cloud. It will come and go. Oh, even when I've not paid my rent for three months, oh yes, you will make it. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Oh, my children are doing this. Oh, my children. You know, the other one, instead of improving, he's also sleeping in the ditches. He's sleeping in the drenches. He's sleeping. No, we just pray. We'll talk to that boy. And things are going to work. Encourage somebody. Be of good report. Be a good reporter, if I call them that way. Do not be one who pulls down. Do not be one who finishes what was left of somebody's strength. The little energy that they have, they need you to encourage them. I 
have prayed for this issue for a long time. Now I feel like giving up. Don't tell them, yenyewe, yenyewe hapo, yenyewe hapo afadhali sasa uwache, uwanza kuombea ingine. No! Tell them, our God is still gracious. Our God is able. God is coming. And you get you out of this. God is coming and he'll remember you. And then you give them events in the Bible, events in other people's lives. Tell them, the God of so and so is the same God who is on the throne. Be of good report. Tell that person who has been waiting for a baby for many years. Tell them I have a friend who waited for 12 years, who waited for 8 years, and God came. Hallelujah. That is good report. Whatever is of good report, meditate on it. Do not pull people down. Do not discourage people. When people complain about their churches, oh, another and a friend of mine was telling me, Lucy, our church, Kuitisho pesa, gai, mimi nataka kuwacha hiyo kanisa, mimi sijui, au nikuche kwenu, kawabia kama kwetu nakuja sababu ya hiyo, katu kwenu, kwa sababu, kanisa lazima mtuwe pesa. Sasa nani atafanya hile mambo inafanyua huko? Who caters for the finances? Sinisisi tu. Encourage yourself in the Lord, but stay in your church. But if you wanted to come for another reason, maybe because of the other management, kuja. But I will not tell you to leave your church because of ati kutoa pesa. Kutoa pesa lazima tutatoa. Nilimwambia in a way that alifurahia sana. Kwa sababu, first of all, mina fanya kama ni kuatak. And then I explain. Be of good report. And tell people the truth. Tulisema, whatever things that are just, tell them the truth. That there are some things, they just have to be done. Usipakapake mafuta. Enyewe kuja kwetu, kwetu hakuna pesa tunaitisho. E, nani nani ananunuwa viti? Unamuambia ni nani ananunuwa viti? Nani ananunuwa hizi mics kama si sisi? E, nani ya metengeneza hapa? Expect nani ya tengeneza reverend? No, the truth is that church has to give. Church goers have to give. The children of the kingdom have to give. It's a virtue and it is not in vain. Buwana asifiwe sana. Amen. So, because of time, and whatever things are praiseworthy, wacha tumalizia na hapo, whatever things are praiseworthy, whatever things that can be talked about, meditate upon them. Whatever things that add value, think about them. And you know, you can persuade your heart and your mind to be redirected. Kama nikuwa nimeanza kuona, sasa hele na nakuwaga aje. I can tell my mate, apana, not Helen, please. Wacha tuone uzuri wa Helen. Wacha tuone mazuri ya huyo mtu. Okay? So, may God bless you as we pursue the things that help us in the kingdom. Meditate upon them. Persuade your heart. Persuade your mind. Persuade your everything to meditate on the things that are of virtue, of value, things that are of help in the kingdom. And we are going to find it interesting. We are going to find a, a good life and we are going to even have the joy of our salvation. If it is gone, it shall be restored. And you are going to be happy in the kingdom without a lot of ouch here. Oh, oh, so and so said. You are going to be happy even as you serve the Lord in the kingdom. Buona wabariki sana.